Football is officially back. The San Francisco 49ers will kick off preseason play against the Las Vegas Raiders on Sunday. We're going to be doing a watch party for this matchup right here on the San Francisco 49ers report. Kickoff is slated at Allegiant Stadium for 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific. We will be going live an hour before kickoff for this fantastic rivalry. It's a rivalry in the National Football League. It's a great rivalry here at Chat Sports. Mitchell Renz is one of my boys, one of my best friends, not just here at the office, but outside of the office as well. But we're both very, very competitive. And we're having a sub battle all throughout this week to see which channel can pick up more subs. Now, we're winning up to this point as far as subs this week, and I want to get the Niners report to Raiders report level where they're approaching 139,000 subscribers. So show us some love. Hit that sub button. Let's beat the Raiders on the field and here at Chat Sports. Ten players to watch against the Las Vegas Raiders. That is our segment for today's show, and I want to start off with Deshaun Jameson, the undrafted free agent corner out of Texas. UDFA who has been playing really well in training camp up to this point, and a big reason why an avenue is open for him to potentially crack this 53-man roster. The fifth-round pick out of South Alabama, Darrell Luter Jr., has been out. Has not practiced once because of an off-season injury away from the facility. That's why he was placed on PUP. And Deshaun Jameson has done a terrific job. Steve Wilkes, Kyle Shanahan, Brandon Ayuk, John Lynch, all complimenting his play. And I want to see in live action against another team, will his size, because he's a little bit shorter, be somewhat of an issue? Deshaun Jamison, player number one to watch. Player number two, Jair Brown, the rookie safety out of Penn State, the highest draft selection for San Francisco in the 2023 NFL Draft. He was all over the place in OTAs, making play after play after play. He had multiple interceptions, somewhat of a silent training camp up to this week where he had his first interception of camp against Sam Darnold on Tuesday. That was Darnold's first interception of training camp. So he had been making some good decisions with the football. I think that Brown will show a lot of people that he might be a better game player as compared to being a practice player. Like Talanoa Hufanga, who's a better game player than practice player. Very instinctual. And I want to see how his feel for the game, being able to diagnose plays before they happen, allows him to be successful in between the lines. Now, if you hate the Las Vegas Raiders like me, type FLV down in the comment section right now and make sure you hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. They were never faithful to the Bay left for L.A., went back to Oakland, now they're in Vegas, whereas the Niners, forever faithful to the Bay. Another player I'm excited to watch, D. Winters. He's having a really good training camp, and he could crack this linebacker rotation as a rookie who was drafted late out of TCU. He's displayed a lot of versatility as a coverage backer, as well as a blitzer. Really good quickness and speed at that linebacker spot. Is he going to be good enough to earn linebacker three reps because it's him as a late round pick out of TCU and Jalen Graham, the late pick out of Purdue, who have been performing pretty damn well. And this is a good problem to have for San Francisco with two of their young backers and D winners and Jalen Graham both playing well because you're going to have to replenish that position. You lost Aziz Alshire and he goes to the Tennessee Titans and I think that part of the reason why the Niners drafted D. Winters and Jalen Graham is because they lost Aziz Alshire, who left for more money. Dre Greenlaw might be due for a big payday again after signing that extension last offseason. And you get to replenish the cupboard to a certain degree with both Graham and Winters. He has a DB background, just like Marcelino McCrary Ball, who is, in my opinion, on the inside track to start alongside Warner and Greenlaw. And that's been on display. Good ball skills, good awareness, good athleticism, pretty twitchy player. He's made quality plays in team drills. Might be difficult for him to crack the 53-man roster, but not if he plays really well in training camp. Obviously, the number one player to watch, as this list is in no particular order, quarterback Trey Lance. But if I went with him at number one, some of you would just tune out of the show. And if you're still here, give me a real one right now. Lance 
What I'm excited to see with him, he changed his mechanics this offseason after working with Jeff Christensen, the private throwing coach for Patrick Mahomes. The release, it's faster. It's quicker. It's much more fluid. It's been cleaned up where Lance doesn't have as loopy of an arm delivery. It doesn't take him as long to get rid of the football. And because of that, he's been a little bit more accurate on some of the plays that we've seen him miss the last two years. Going into year three, he's been throwing tighter spirals. Is that because the finger injury is healed? Is that a combination of the finger injury and the mechanical changes? Who knows? But what I do know is that last year, Lance was throwing a lot of wobbly passes with velocity. You know what's a really difficult thing to do? Catch a fastball that is wobbly. You need that tight spiral. You just need it. I don't care if you're Jerry Rice or somebody else. A quarterback who throws a wobbly fastball doesn't do any favors for his wide receiver. Footwork in his lower half has been tuned up to a certain degree as well. I want to see if Lance can hit some of those layups. He obviously brings an explosive element to this offense with his ability to run, but he has the best deep ball among all quarterbacks on this roster. Will he let it rip against the Raiders? Will Kyle Shanahan call any runs? Because up until Monday's practice, no quarterback draws called. It's Kyle Shanahan kind of thinking about last year when Lance got injured and what Lance needs action and reps. So I hope that the Niners do him a favor, but in turn, do themselves a favor. Because if Brock Purdy gets injured, who's most likely next up? Lance. And what does Lance need if he has to step in for a team with Super Bowl aspirations? Time, experience, action, reps. Has an opportunity to do that and get that in three preseason games. It all starts on Sunday. So let's tee this up. Who are you going with? I know it's just a preseason game, but this is the most excited I've ever been for preseason football and the regular season. And if you're a Niners fan, oftentimes you see garbage quarterback play in the fourth quarter. Throughout this preseason, we might be seeing Brock Purdy, not expected to play against the Raiders, by the way. Brock Purdy, though, Trey Lance, Sam Darnold, and Brandon Allen. It's pretty cool. SF for the Niners, LV for the Raiders. Let me know who you got. On the back half of this list, again, no particular order here, Sam Darnold. I just want to see what he's able to do. Can he be a reclamation project under Kyle Shanahan? He's had no stability at UCL, uh, USC with the New York Jets or the Carolina Panthers. Does he finally have that with an actual well-run organization and good coaching staff? He's had multiple coaches, multiple offensive coordinators. Didn't throw a pick up until Monday, so making strides as far as the decision-making goes. The QB2 battle could very well be decided in these preseason games. It's Darnold and Lance right now. As of Tuesday, Darnold had only thrown one pick and has a ton of natural ability. Really big, very athletic, strong arm that hasn't translated to a lot of success in between the lines. But again, I think the surrounding situation for Darnold has played a role in that. If you want to bet on this preseason game for Sunday, no better place to do it than our sportsbook partner, BetUS. You can get a 125% deposit bonus by heading to chatsports.com slash 49ersbet and use the promo code Niners125. What that means is you put in $100, you get $125 back. You see the deal right here to my right. BetUS, best sportsbook in the game. Spencer Wagey. Defensive end, who can also play defensive tackle. Player out of North Dakota State, who I'm intrigued by. Has that flexibility to play outside and inside. He's been having a pretty good training camp. The Niners want to get a good look at a player like this, as well as a lot of their other rookies. Yes, they have a couple of joint practices and scrimmages against the Raiders this week, but they want to see what they can do in actual game action. And if Wagey performs well, can he earn a rotation spot along this 49ers defensive line? Make sure you join us on Sunday for that watch party. Niners, Raiders, historic rivalry over the course of NFL history. Sam. Francisco, let's go. Leroy Watson, spent a couple of moments talking about him. He checks in at number seven in our 10 players to watch. Interesting story for Leroy Watson. He played tight end at UTSA. That's also where Spencer Burford, the Niners starting right guard, played. He made the switch to tackle. Niners are trying to mold him 
into an athletic tackle with quick feet. We've seen this positional switch happen before, and he's very athletic. He's just really raw, given his inexperience playing that position at the NFL level. He's gotten some positive reviews, though. I want to see what he looks like on the field. The young tight ends, two players that I really want to watch because can they unseat Ross Dwelly and Charlie Warner? Can the two rookies make the team and the two veterans don't make the team in Dwelly and Warner? We're talking about Braden Willis, who's had a good camp, and Cam Latou, who's been kind of up and down so far. And then lastly, Danny Gray. Very, very fascinating player here and a fascinating skill set. Show up and show out. It's your time. And last preseason, Danny Gray was able to do that. He had that long touchdown catch from Trey Lance. He's had a solid training camp. I want to see his 4-3 speed on display. He's had some trouble with drops this year and last year. During a practice session on Monday, had a drop or two, and then came back and caught a couple of big passes. I think two went for touchdowns. Roster spot is not guaranteed because other wide receivers have been playing well, and there's a little bit of a logjam at that position. But he's the fastest wide receiver on this team at 4-3, and a vertical presence can open up a lot of underneath stuff for Adebo, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle. We're going to go bonus player here because we always go the extra distance here on the Niners Report. That's why you subscribe. Kickers are people too. Jake Moody on Tuesday's practice, or in Tuesday's practice, during it, I should say. He hit a couple of 60-yard field goals. I just want to see Kyle Shanahan, maybe even on a third down late in the game. You know, the Niners are at like the 45-yard line. Get Jake Moody out there. Get him some reps. Get him some kicks. Let's see that big leg on display. And he's performed well in training camp, making his kicks, doing what the Niners have asked of him, especially in some of these situations. Practice, different from the game, Allegiant Stadium, going to be a pretty solid atmosphere just because of the rivalry between the Niners and the Raiders. How does he do with pressure? Jake Moody, pressure is on you. So before we hop on out of here, predict the score. Niners, Raiders, who you got on Sunday? Hope to see all of you for our watch party. Super Chat giveaway on tap. It's going to be a blast.